So today we're talking about Breath of the Wild 2. I know, how original. A bunch of my YouTube friends have actually been talking about Breath of the Wild 2 today, and we'll get to them in a moment. Uh, but this video is actually brought to you by ourselves. We are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, one of these bad boys here, or a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky winner this month. All you have to do is head down to the pinned comment in the description uh, and, you know, enter from there. We have a gleam.io link. Uh, the only re base requirement is that you are subscribed to the channel. If I do draw your name and find out you're not subscribed, we will just redraw a new name. Not that much to ask, I think. By the way, if you're new to the channel, drop a like and all of that jazz. All right, let's just talk about Breath of the Wild 2 for a moment because today is a bit of a monumental day. I actually wrote up a smidge of a script I'm gonna read for a brief moment. Um, not, it's, it's really not that much, it just it's the weekend and E3 appears to be coming back, which we all know, obviously. You know, we heard the news. E3 appears to be coming back. They're at least reaching out to the developers to start setting up the show. Uh, this sparked all sorts of conversations and ideals to look forward to. As Nintendo fans, of course, we have one game on our minds. Uh, quite interesting, considering that all of the games that are coming out are pretty amazing this year for Switch. Uh, is it Sparks of Hope? Heck, we haven't seen that since E3 last year. Uh, maybe it's Bayonetta 3. We only really saw that game once. We need to see more of it. Uh, after all, we're kind of overdue for information on that game. But obviously, you know, Metroid Prime 4 is it, right? That's what we're looking forward to is Metroid Prime 4. After all, it was revealed at E3 2017. Of course, we're actually just talking about Breath of the Wild 2. So, yeah, I'm not one to just ignore that uh, everyone else has been talking about it lately too. So, actually, here's some clips of some of my favorite YouTubers today uh, and a, a few choice things they said along the way. Enjoy for a second. Because of Pokemon that's coming out this year, Scarlet and Violet, that somehow that pushes Breath of the Wild 2 to next year. But one thing that Nate from Direct Feed Games had to say is that he stated that he already knew that Pokemon was going to be a 2022 title. Also, Jordan Fringe, Pokemon Superfan, also felt that that was gonna be a 2022 title. But the big thing here is that Nintendo already knew, the Pokemon company Nintendo already knew that Pokemon was gonna be a 2022 title before they announced The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for 2022. So if Nintendo was gonna delay it because of Pokemon or anything like that, they could have just done it back then. There was no reason to still go forward with saying, hey, it's 2022, if you knew that Pokemon was already coming, right? But with E3 2022 seemingly being on the table, we go back to the question that we just had. Well, why is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 not at the February Nintendo Direct? So with E3 2022 seemingly happening, we have to start to look towards the Nintendo Direct that's going to take place during this. Nintendo always does a Nintendo Direct, and they're usually really good, but I almost feel like the lines have been a bit blurred with this rise of the digital era and the rise of the digital age, because you could argue that the February Nintendo Direct that we got could have been an E3 one. Like if you would have thrown in another game or two, like that thing was stacked. That thing was stacked to the brim with game announcements, trailers, gameplay, everything you really want from one of these presentations. So we have to circle back to the main question. Well, why wasn't Breath of the Wild 2 at that February Direct? Is it going to be at this Summer Direct? And when the hell is this game coming out? Because I'm still of the mindset that this is not guaranteed to be a 2022 game. And I know that's going to upset some people. I know that that's going to be, you know, a bit of a hot take or controversial topic, but we're seeing this happen with lots of games. Think of how many games were supposed to come out in 2021 that ended up getting delayed. Think of how many games that were supposed to come out in 2022 ended up getting delayed. I mean, games like Forspoken was supposed to be out like around this time, and now it's not coming out till October. Gotham Knights has been delayed as well. It's happening a lot more in the video game industry because of the change in work conditions and things of that nature. Welcome everyone, this is On Just Restart, and this time, we're gonna be talking about why the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is taking so long. Why are we waiting so long for Breath of the Wild 2? Wasn't this game supposed to be out already? This game is a sequel from Breath of the Wild. It has a foundation with that game. It's been in development for years. And at this point, the development time is looking to be even longer than Breath of the Wild. So I got to thinking, all right, I was biking around as you do in March when you live in Arizona and it's 82 degrees. You know, I was shooting some B-roll out by the school and I was thinking about this year for Switch. 
man, is it amazing. You don't need to hear that from me. You know it. The games just keep coming and the list just gets larger and larger. It's an insane year, probably the best ever. But I was thinking about it in a different way. Like if we get Breath of the Wild 2, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Splatoon 3, Legends Arceus, new Kirby, new Mario Strikers, new Fire Emblem and more, Metroid Bayonetta even, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, what next? Is Nintendo, and pardon me here, blowing their load in 2022, and will that be a problem going forward? Now look, <laughs> that's a lot of things to go over from player essence, uh, basically saying that, you know, Nintendo obviously knew about the release date of Pokemon, the new Pokemon game coming this year, so that isn't a surprise to Nintendo and wouldn't inherently be the reason it would be delayed. Uh, RGT85 also, you know, kind of going the direction of, hey, look, if it is delayed, it wouldn't really be surprising. Uh, Andres, we start talking about how, man, it's kind of weird this game's taking longer to develop than the original Breath of the Wild. Obviously, the pandemic plays a, 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 probably some sort of role in that. Uh, and then Switch Force, you know, kind of going out of his way, love Zach, but uh, went out of his way to kind of say, hey, look, if Breath of the Wild 2 does drop this year, Switch might be in a little bit of trouble because of how massive the lineup this year is. How the heck can they follow it up? Of course, you could argue that, hey, they're not really blowing their entire load. We don't have a, a, a new Mario game after Mario Odyssey. That could be something for 2023. Metroid Prime 4, probably going to be a 2023 game. Of course, they don't know what else they're going to come up with. One other sequels, or maybe we get a new Paper Mario next year. I don't know. There, there's a lot of things that are up on the table for debate. But I actually find this topic to be quite interesting because Breath of the Wild 2 is clearly going to be the big game at E3. Uh, you know, if E3 happens, which it certainly looks like it's going to, which... Oh my God, I can't wait. We have such a massive event for you guys. In fact, we already have a couple of giveaway items. Maybe if you guys uh, stick around to the end, you'll see a couple of the items we're gonna be giving away during that E3 show. By the way, the show extends the Summer Game Fest and E3, so six or seven days long. It's gonna be insane. Um, but here's the thing. Breath of the Wild 2 is one of the most anticipated games I think that's ever existed. Uh, and that's quite interesting because obviously Breath of the Wild became a massively anticipated game after E3 2016. But seeing that the game has sold 27 and a half million units, if you count Wii U sales, which are only about 1.69 million. So it's not like it's a huge amount, but you include that into the total sales number. And yeah, Breath of the Wild is probably going to cross 30 million by the end of this year. Uh, that's insane. And that's without a price drop. That's without being bundled in with Switch at any point during its life. Uh, that's even without some sort of major sale. Like, yeah, you can regularly find it on Amazon for like $45, but that's Amazon discounting the game. That's not Nintendo. Nintendo did not discount that copy when they sold it to Amazon to resell and upcharge. So yeah, Amazon's just taking out their profit cut and selling it to you for cheaper. But Nintendo hasn't lowered the MSRP. It hasn't had any major sale, hasn't had any major new bundles. I think the last major bundle was, uh, happened in 2017 or 2018 where they put like a little strategy guide in with it. And it really wasn't a bundle. They just sold it for the same price. And for a time period, you got like a little guide thing with it, which was, it was kind of neat, uh, but you know, kind of unnecessary too, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, Breath of the Wild, obviously recently at IGN actually ranked as the best open world Zelda game of all time. Wait, did I say Zelda game? Sorry, I meant best open world game of all time, ranking ahead of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Elden Ring and many, many others, The Witcher 3, etc. It is at the top of the mountain, according to IGN. And we can all talk about how we don't care about these outlets, but the fact remains that five years in, Breath of the Wild doesn't seem like it's any less impressive in 2022 than it was back then. So naturally, the sequel to one of the greatest games, one of the highest rated, one of the best selling games to ever release, especially best selling on just an individual platform, 25 million units plus, on, almost 26 million on just the Nintendo Switch alone. That is massively impressive. Horizon Zero Dawn, 20 million units across PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. And they had to discount that game a year later to $10, and they gave it away for free on PS Plus last year for a time for like a month or whatever. So yeah, all that considered to get close to what Breath of the Wild was doing sales-wise on a single platform. Just let that sink in. Breath of the Wild's popular, right? We all know it. It's amazing, it's stunning. Something about this game from a gameplay perspective just clicks. Not everyone enjoys the way the story is told. I happen to really enjoy it, but not it's not everyone's cup of tea. So Breath of the Wild 2 obviously is one of the most anticipated Zelda games of all time. And history will tell you, of course, that whenever Nintendo gives you a date for a home console Zelda game, a year anyways, 
it's delayed. Twilight Princess, 2005, except it didn't come out till 2006 and launched with the Wii. Skyward Sword, going to be 2010, except it didn't come out till 2011. Uh, oh, by the way, Breath of the Wild, supposed to come out in 2015, didn't launch until 2017. So there is a pattern of recent history where Zelda games get delayed. A Link to the Past was delayed back in the day. Uh, Ocarina of Time was delayed back in the day. So this happens a lot. There was an announced date, and Nintendo didn't even seem firm on it. They said, we are planning, we are targeting to get this game out in 2022. They didn't even seem that firm on it last year. But things I don't think have changed, because at this point, you know, we're, we're getting to almost three full months into the year, heading into four, you know, a quarter of the year gone by. And by now, if the game was going to be significantly delayed, it probably would have been announced. I, I don't think that there is any, you know, idea that it, it wouldn't... It, it wouldn't have been announced at this point because people are obviously highly anticipating this game. And I don't think there's any doubt that at E3 2022, whenever Nintendo drops their Nintendo Direct, you know, during that event, that there's going to be a big feature on Zelda. I don't know if this feature is going to be five minutes, 15 minutes, two minutes. I don't know, but there are things I expect out of this feature. I expect the title. If it is coming this year, I expect an exact release date. If it is delayed to early 2023, which is why I said, a major delay delaying it to like you know january february march to me would not be a major delay delaying it to holiday 2023 or all the way to the next generation platform that's a major delay and those are the delays i don't think are going to happen uh but they could obviously make it early 2023 if they needed to i don't think that's going to happen though i actually think it's going to be dropping this november and pokemon surprisingly is going to drop in december i actually think that's the plan and that's why they said late 2022 with the pokemon game instead of holiday 2022 because late 2022 really infers december whereas holiday 2022 heavily hints towards november uh so i think that this was always the plan nintendo knew it they've organized it with the pokemon company zelda for november pokemon for december what a massive way to end this year and this game holds a lot of hopes and dreams for a lot of people from zelda fans to nintendo fans to people worried about things like valve steam deck taking over and you know, oh my gosh, what's the point of Switch anymore? Valve Steam Deck can play Switch games better than Switch, which it can't, not really. Um, more, the more intense exclusive Switch games like Super Mario Odyssey don't really run at what you would consider playable frame rates on Valve Steam Deck. Now that might change updates, you know, optimization, all that. So eventually it might be true. The potential is there that it could outperform Switch. Uh, with Switch games, but it's not there yet. So a lot of people are looking towards Nintendo to go, hey, we need these big games to come out to remind people that, you know what? Switch ain't going anywhere. It don't matter what Valve's doing. It don't matter what Sony's doing. It don't matter what Xbox is doing. Game Pass, incredible. Horizon Forbidden West, incredible. Elden Ring, hey, from software, absolutely incredible. Game of the year contender, the leading game of the year contender for general outlets at this time. Probably... Right now, if the Game Awards was today, would be Game of the Year. But Breath of the Wild doesn't want to be forgotten. Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't want to be forgotten. And it will be interesting to see if it does still come out this year. Because I think if they delayed it to next year, Nintendo would be sort of ensuring that Breath of the Wild 2 has a shot at Game of the Year. Whereas this year, that's stiff competition. And it, it's just a shoe in that it's going to beat out Elden Ring. And we got to get to the review scores even matching at first, let alone the sales. So we'll see what happens. But Breath of the Wild 2 is in a very interesting place because Elden Ring, I think, rails the bar just a little. It took a lot of what people loved about Breath of the Wild with the exploration and expanded it in different ways, obviously using that Dark Souls formula. Zelda's not going to go with that Dark Souls formula, of course, but they are going to go in their own direction and expand upon what Breath of the Wild set up. And we don't know what that expansion is. We know about some of the new abilities because they leaked in some uh, patent documents last year, but we don't know how this is all going to come together. How is the gameplay of Breath of the Wild going to actually evolve? Oh, we're in the sky. Oh, we're falling down. Cave of Sheikah Slate abilities. Do these other abilities live up to the Sheikah Slate? abilities uh and do they add you know fascinating brand new gameplay elements does the physics engine evolve as andres restart pointed out this game has had more development time than the original breath of the wild where i need to remind you they had to build a brand new video game engine from the ground up to specifically make breath of the wild the way they wanted to they did not need to do that for the sequel so the expectations must be sky high. The pandemic can explain some of the time that it's taken, but not all of it. 
The polish put into this game must be absolutely insane. The size of the world, no matter what is there from the sky to the ground to the underground, probably dwarfs Breath of the Wild. I wouldn't be surprised if there's twice as large as Breath of the Wild when everything's put together in terms of just the world and the changes in the world and the craziness of the story and what happens if Zelda is also playable in a different way. What happens if there's time travel? What happens if there's all this craziness and Skyward Sword and what if Demise comes back and when, you know, Fee Fi Fo Fum pops out of your sword at one point because there was a reference to Fee in the original Breath of the Wild besides the goddess statues. We obviously got Skyward Sword HD last year, which could have been a heavy hint that there's a reason that people should be playing that game right now and why we haven't gotten Twilight Princess and Wind Waker yet because they don't want to take away from Skyward Sword that's going to help lead into Breath of the Wild. So Breath of the Wild 2, that is. So I, it, there's a lot riding on this game for Nintendo because this is the game that when this comes out, we're not getting another one for probably five years. Even if there's, this becomes a trilogy of games, which it very well might be. If this is another Zelda game that moves 15, 20 plus million units, Nintendo's making a third. It's going to happen. And when they do, it's going to be on their next generation system. We're not going to see it. If it drops right now, we're not seeing a new Zelda till 2027 at the earliest. I mean, it's possible to get one out sooner, I would suspect 2027, which will probably be right smack dab in the middle of Nintendo's next system's life. Now, I do obviously think with the Mario Kart 8 DLC, they're going to be launching the next system with Mario Kart 9 or 10 or whatever they end up calling it, Crossroads, all the rumors out there. Uh, maybe even the reason we haven't got a new Mario game is they plan to launch that next system with a new Mario game because they know Zelda's not going to be there. They're going to heavily push Mario, which hasn't always worked out for them, by the way. Super Mario 64 is amazing, but the N64 didn't sell that well. So that didn't, didn't really work for them. New Super Mario Brothers uh, U was, is, is a really nice game, but didn't really help the Wii U push units. So Mario Kart, though, that early in the life cycle would probably be a nice big system seller. And who knows what the hell else Nintendo has working on. Because all these franchises that we're getting this year, whether, you know, Kirby, which we get Kirby games every year, but not Kirby games like this. A Kirby game like this, probably going to be another two, three years before we see one. Um, you know, we got a new Xenoblade game dropping this year. Again, probably going to be four or five years before we see a brand new Xenoblade game. Uh, Zelda, again, four or five years, etc., etc., etc. For all the amazingness we're getting this year, it's going to be a while. It's going to be five years before Splatoon 3. You know, we got Animal Crossing back in 2019, but there was an eight-year gap. Or, sorry, 2020. Eight-year gap. So, are we not seeing that till 2028? Obviously, Nintendo will port over a lot of games and do what they need to do, even if it's backwards compatible. We'll pack all the DLC, release Ultimate Editions and Deluxe Editions and up res and whatever they got to do to sell those games again. But bottom line is Breath of the Wild 2 has a lot riding on it because it has to compete with games that have learned from what Breath of the Wild set up, yet it also has to compete with itself. Itself is its own competition. Breath of the Wild is so great. Can a true sequel be even better? You know what? I think we're going to find out later this year. You guys let me know about your hopes and dreams and your thoughts on all of this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. <laughs> Gosh, any excuse to talk about Breath of the Wild 2 is always a great one. Catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.